In this video, I'm going to talk about these. The very awesome looking Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. Okay, so this launches I think in February sometime, uh, so not too long to wait now. £210 apparently is the price it's going to be. Uh, and there's going to be another colourway which is like a, a red and white colour which looks awesome. Uh, but I really love this sort of camo paint look on the shoe now this is uh, Mizuno's first sort of marathon racing shoe um, and it just I uh, just think it looks awesome uh, let's talk about uh, the features there's quite a lot going on here when Mizuno sent me the the shoe through they also sent me a PDF uh, with some stuff on it so I'm going to read some of it out so I don't muck it completely up uh, but we've got a dual density midsole set up here we've got two layers here we've got on top we've got the quick um, energy light plus and then we've got on the second level we've got just the energy light which is a PIBA based foam so this is the softer material here versus the slightly harder they then got a uh, carbon reinforced wave plate going through the the shoe which has got like a winged element here to add a little bit of stability but you can see from the um, multitude of cutaways that the plate is there it's quite an aggressive plate I'll come on to that in just a bit we've got a uh, mesh upper loads of holes all over it as you'd expect from a racing shoe uh, in terms of fit it does fit snug. I don't have a problem with it because it's a racing shoe, but it does fit snug, so watch your sizing. There's a little bit of a heel counter, but not a hell of a lot of structure up the back. It's a little bit more than I expected, actually, considering its racing nature. Uh, we'll come on to the actual, um, you know, the cutaways and stuff like that, because it's, it's a good, important point to talk about. We've got G3 rubber on the outside, which is very sticky. Uh, I've been having some fun with this in London and, and in the Lee Valley, and it's been fantastic, the outside. It's very grippy and very tacky, so I really do like the outsole, uh, 240 grams in my uh, new K9.5. We've got 39 mil stack. Uh, it's measured down here um, to a 33 in the um, toe. So we've got a six mil drop. I'll come on to all, all this sort of weird stuff going on here in a minute. Uh, we've got a two lace loop tongue to, uh, because it's not gusseted to sort of lock that in, just a thin mesh. We've got some internal straps to add some uh, optimal fit and support. Uh, and that's probably about it in terms of the sort of stats and features. Okay, so the guys at Mizuno have been really clever uh, and they've cut away um, this part of the shoe. And the idea is, is that, is, and it's called smooth, hang on, uh, smooth Speed Assist. So this part of the heel here, um, they've cut out the heel area to lead towards a natural foot strike landing. The important part of the shoe is here, this element, and, and again, let me just get the slide so I don't muck this up. It's an extended midfoot area which is the key factor to create the unique benefit of the smooth, uh, the smooth speed assist, which is all about getting you going forward. It's a platform for the runner to push off to propel them forward. So you're, you're sort of landing on this um, midfoot area and then with the combination of the two foams working with the plate, it's really aggressively pushing you forward. And like I said, it's quite an aggressive plate, which I'll come on to in a minute but that's okay so uh this shoe feels very alien when you put it on it reminded me very much of when i first put on the alpha fly version one uh it's a very uh decoupled feel to the shoe because of all the cutouts where they've been trying to save weight and things like that it does feel very strange if you're not used to putting one of these kind of shoes on but once you get up and running in it is absolutely fine you don't notice any of that uh it's it's very much a sort of um middle ground between the Endorphin Elite and the Alpha Fly version 1 and 2 in terms of the feel underfoot and also a little bit like the Puma Fast R because of all the cutouts and, and whatnot that it's got um, but it's, it's, there's an overriding feel of speed now there's absolutely no way that I would wear this shoe in a marathon I don't have the confidence to run this shoe in the marathon because the carbon plate is very aggressive and responds extremely well to the higher paces I don't think I'm fast enough to run this shoe properly um, which I say on a few shoes now that might seem a bit of a funny thing to say but it's not uh, there's certain shoes that work better at slightly slower places so for me a goal pace is, is 8.30 per mile um, I, I could probably get away with it in here but as I slow and tire I think I would, I would struggle with this shoe I think it would it'd be, get a bit messy uh, where something like the Endorphin Elite or you know the Adios Pro 3 you know I, I've got the confidence that I can sort of step back in that shoe a little bit and it will come to me and it will help me out a little bit this is just a much more aggressive 
uh, racing shoe, which I think is what it's designed for. And that's not so. It's not um, me being horrible about the shoe. In fact, anything if you if you're gunning for it, this could be a really good weapon to put on your feet. It kind of feels that middle ground between the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly. Now, the Vapor Fly is a very quick shoe, uh, and again, unstable for me to wear over a marathon distance. That's a shoe that I would, you know, quite comfortably wear at a 10k if I was licking along on a half marathon. And the shoe feels like this, this shoe, the Wave Rebellion Pro, feels sort of that middle ground between the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly in terms of ultimate speed. It really is trying to get you to do this. It is really going. Go for it, come on 40, push along, push along. You just want to run extremely fast in it. Now I can't maintain those speeds for long periods of time, um, so maybe you are a fast runner and you can control that speed and maintain it for long periods of time. I can't, and that's why I don't think this shoe would work for me over the marathon distance, but I think this shoe would work very well for me over the half marathon distance. And that's where I want to use it. So for me, uh, although this is marketed and sorry Mizuna is like a marathon shoe, I think if you're like, a bit like me and you, and you want a quicker shoe for half marathons, then this could be worth a look. But you've got to check your sizing because it is snug. Uh, and again, I don't have a problem with that because it's a race day shoe, so I don't mind it being a little bit more uh, snug and a little bit more sort of feeling like, come on, we're strapping these on and we're going for it. Um, I don't have an issue with that. But this is a very fast shoe. But I don't think I can, as I said, hold that speed for long enough over the, the, the distance of the marathon. I think this, for me, sweet spot is the half marathon. But it's a lot of fun. It really is. It is a lot of fun to run in this shoe. Uh, I really like the tackiness of the outsole. They've done a fantastic job in terms of the coverage. They could have, you know, lost some of it here and here. But they really have done a great job in terms of overall co um, coverage of the shoe. Because they could have made it lighter, I guess. Uh, but it just, yeah, it just feels like a a racing shoe and I like that and that's what I want from a super shoe I want a shoe that I if I'm you know spending 200 and something pounds that I'm going to put on I'm going to feel like I can like knock out an elephant you know it's that sort of feeling of I'm going to get on the start and I'm going to go bananas at this race and that's what this kind of does it, it's, it's a naughty little thing and, and it really does encourage that fast turnover that really quick pace from you and, and you can and you can get ahead of yourself if you're not too careful with it, it's, it's just it's just a lot of fun. So that's where I'm at uh, with the Wave Rebellion Pro. I'm now gonna box them and we're gonna go and do a race. Uh, when that race is, I've got no idea. So it could be uh, May, could be April, could be July. Whenever it is, um, we'll put a race down in the shoot and we'll report back, okay? So um, if you're thinking about it, looking at it, I would, uh, one, watch your size. Two, think about what you're going to be using it for. Uh, for me, it's, it's, it's a little bit too quick for the marathon distance. Uh, and £210 to spend on a shoe that, you know, you may be limited in. It's up to you. Uh, but overall, I, I just love what they've done. I love the feeling of the midsole. The, the carbon plate is aggressive uh, with the whole setup of the shoe pushing you forward. But again, I, I, I like that. It's sort of, you know, strap them on and hold on tight sort of stuff. So I think that's what you've got to think about is whether you want a chilled out race experience or you want like some nutter on your feet because that's what it feels like in a, in a positive way. Okay, right, so that's it. That's my impressions of the Wave Rebellion Pro. Hopefully that was useful. Let me know in the comments if you grab a pair and I'll catch you later. <laughs>